This is one of those moments that's just a little confusing in life. We're parked on the side of the freeway, but not because the El Camino has, is having any problems, because there's a freaking LS sitting on the ground. Hey, Jake, I think you dropped your engine. Yeah. Did, some, did this fall out of the back of somebody's truck or something? <laughs> so weird. I mean, seriously, check it out. It's an LS. It's even got the sensor still in it. It's still got the coil backs on it. Bizarre. We got it up in there. Look, the oil pan's not even cracked. Oh, there we go. Just like that, we got a brand new to us 48 slash 53. We'll find out later. Pretty ridiculous. We are back at the shop. You keep an engine lift in the back of the car. <laughs> the turn. Uh oh. <laughs> And it is incredibly gross. Like, that's like the oil was never changed in this motor. Look at that. Mmm, delicious. So, we're digging a little further into our Interstate Find LS, which is such a weird thing to find. You normally don't find the tire motors on the side of the road, but we did. Um, so, I sprayed some WD 40 down in the cylinders. When I looked in the spark plug holes, it was really rusty, and we couldn't really turn it by hand. We got it to budge but it didn't rotate. So now that it's sat with some WD-40 in it and we can actually put a breaker bar on it, I'm curious to see if it'll actually spin. Oh, the bolt's just tightening so far. That was pretty tight. I don't want to snap the bolt off in the crank. Well, I don't really want to go any more than that. Not good. So, I think I'm just gonna pull the heads off and see what it looks like inside before I break something. Um, granted, it already seems pretty broken, but it would be pretty awesome if we could get this thing running again. I mean, what a great story. You find a free motor on the side of the road and then put it in something, that'd be pretty cool. So I'm gonna tear it apart and uh, see if we can build it. I'm sure it needs a full rebuild. Just looking at the sludge up here, it's definitely not been taken care of. It's had a hard life, but I think it's got a chance because like I said, when we got it here, we did get it to move just a little bit, like maybe half a degree, like it, it budged, um, but so it's not totally seized. I don't know though, it might just be stupid, but at the same time, it's a good story. So I'm a sucker for a good story, even if it makes for more work. So I was about ready to give up for the night, but my dad was like, well, now that you've tightened it that far, trying to rotate it clockwise, maybe you can actually rotate it counterclockwise. And you might be onto something there. Oh, the crank moved. Oh, did it? It did. Oh yeah, it spun just the a little bit. The moved a little too. Let's go back the other way. So it does move, just very, there very little. There, the crank moved. Oh yeah, it definitely moved. It seems like the cam's locked up. Well, I think there's just so much rust in the cylinders that it can't move up and down from where it was sitting. Seems like the cam is moving a little too. It is. Oh, it I did. saw it move just a little. Oh, oh yeah, it's, go. Been, it's fun just a touch. So there is a chance this motor might be good. So my dad is stubborn and kept working on it. And it's moving just a little bit more every time he moves that back and forth. It's like the little engine that could. I think I can. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Need to hook up a starter to it. Yeah, I don't know about all that. I think that <laughs> might cause some serious problems, but it is moving a little bit more every time he rocks it back and forth. So I think that's just sloughing the rust off the cylinder walls. And uh, who needs to go to the gym <laughs> when you have a <laughs> when you have a free LS you found on the side of the road? Apparently, it's a workout to get it moving again. But you see, even the flex plate is turning. Ooh, it's turning a bunch now. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> It's 
like metal on metal, but I guess it kind of is. Yeah, the cylinder walls are we awful in this thing. Oil in there instead of WD-40. But it's got a chance. I think I think it might just be a buildable engine. We'll find out because we're gonna tear this thing all the way down and look at it. And I have to run another engine to the machine shop anyway. So I might as well take this beautiful specimen there and I'm sure they will love me when they see how dirty and gross it is. But you know, they have hot tanks for a reason, right? They might charge you a little extra for this one. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Pretty wild. And now that we've verified it moves, we're gonna use some of the good stuff. Marvel mystery oil. A lot of people swear by this stuff when it comes to breaking free old engines. Normally you don't use it on an LS, you use it on stuff from like the 30s through the 50s that's been sitting for a long, long time. But I don't know what this motor has been through, so we're gonna dump some of this down the spark plug holes and uh, let it sit again overnight and see if it'll turn a little bit more tomorrow. This engine is kind of a mystery. Oh, it definitely is. <laughs> so it's appropriate. Yeah. So we're gonna dump some of that in there and uh, just let it sit because it needs to soak into those rings and let them break free. How much? Yeah, it doesn't need a whole lot. Do we want to waste Fine that job. good stuff on this old motor? I don't think so. It's like I'm pouring alcohol over here. Mmm, delicious. Pouring shots. Giving it the good stuff. Yep. No expenses spared on this fine specimen. I wish you guys could see inside the cylinders uh, without the heads coming off, because it's pretty rusty when you shine a light down in the spark plug holes. But we'll let that sit, try to spin it a little bit more tomorrow before I tear it down and uh, see if it'll do a full rotation. That would be pretty cool. All right, welcome to the Interstate LS build, if it is gonna be a build, we still don't know. So if you haven't seen part one, I'm gonna put the link down in the description, so go check it out where we actually find this thing on the side of I-85, just north of Noonan. And it literally was just sitting there. It didn't look like it had fallen out of the back of a truck, it's not scuffed up. It looks like somebody literally pulled over, dumped this thing out of the back of their vehicle and kept driving. So we stumbled across it. We rolled it up into the back of the El Camino, just me and my dad with some brute force and muscle. And now we're gonna dig into it and see if it's actually a good motor. In part one, you saw us pull the valve covers off and it's super sludgy inside, but it seems fairly intact. I don't see any broken valves. I don't see anything like that. Um, so we actually got it to rotate over a little bit. So now I'm gonna try to rotate it even more I can tell that the cylinder walls are very rusty from this thing sitting. There's actually some leaves down in the intake ports. So I think it was outside for quite some time without a cover on it. But I'm gonna dig into it, find out if this thing is indeed buildable. First, I'm gonna try to get it to do a full rotation. Then I'm gonna pull the heads off the oil pan, check out the bottom end, check out the cylinder heads, check out the cylinder walls, and then we'll go from there. Uh, it's gotten a lot of attention on the internet, so I guess we kind of have to build it and put it in something, because that would just make for a great story. So, let's see what we can find out. So, it's another day here with the Interstate LS, and uh, I let it soak again overnight with some Marvel's Mystery Oil in it, and now we're gonna see if we can get it to turn over a little bit more than it already did. So, got a breaker bar on here. And it's not really budget, but I can't get it to rotate this other way. Almost a full 90 degrees. So, well, there's a little bit more. So, I don't know, we'll see. We're gonna keep rocking it back and forth and see if it'll free up. I can feel it sloughing rust off the cylinder walls, so I know it's moving further. So far, nothing seems like it's finding super hard. We just keep rocking it back and forth. I think it's gonna make a full rotation. Flex 
plate back here though. So that might be adding to our struggle a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna keep working on this and we'll see if we can get a full rotation out of it. Figured I'd give you guys a little mid teardown update. So this is pretty much the sludgiest, grossest LS I have ever seen in my entire life. I mean, it is properly bad in here. Ugh. Look underneath, man. I mean, that's all sludge packed over there in the corner. Sludge all over there. Look at all the sludge. Oh, perfect timing for that drip. Look at all the sludge on the pickup. The windage tray is lovely. All of it is just beautiful. Look down in there. It's hard to tell what that is. Not sure I want to know, but I can't get it to turn all the way over still. It's uh, binding once it gets, uh, I don't know, about 90 degrees still, maybe a little more. So you see how much it's turning. The once I get, well, that's about 180 probably, if I had to guess. Let's see. Yeah, once it gets right there, it just starts to bind up and that's without any of the valves on or anything. So I know a valve isn't touching a piston, but still it just won't budge from that point. So I'm just gonna pull the heads off and we're gonna look inside the cylinder walls to see what's going on. It's lovely though, quite tasty looking. It's definitely overcooked. Well, there we go. I just got the heads off and the pistons, while they are incredibly dirty, don't actually look that bad. Um, I don't see any obvious signs of like damage. It's just really gross. And like I said, see how rusty the cylinder walls are? Pretty sure this thing is gonna need bored out if it's gonna be saved. But you can see where we've sloughed down uh, kind of the rust that was on there. The cylinder wall actually doesn't look that bad. I'm not gonna say you can see a cross hatch in it or anything, but this is hands down the grossest LS I have ever seen. I think I've already said that, but I really can't express just how disgusting this motor is. But all the pistons look to be in good shape. The cylinder walls, while extremely dirty, I think could be cleaned up. I mean, look how rusty that one is. That's insane. So yeah, it's gross, but it may be fixable. Still yet to be determined. Now it's time to flip it over, make a big mess in my shop, and take apart the bottom end and knock these pistons out. Yeah, that should be fun. I do believe I have discovered why this motor was originally pulled out of whatever it was in. In addition to how gross it is, if you go down the line, cylinder number one's good, cylinder number two is good, three and four seem pretty solid, five and six are also how they're supposed to be, number seven feels pretty good, but then you get to number eight. And I'd say that that bearing is pretty toast. I don't think it threw a rod though, it just has one bad bearing not supposed to move like that. So that is the culprit that junked this motor, but I'm willing to bet the block is still good and could be cleaned and reused. And I may in fact just do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the whole bottom end off and knock all the pistons out. And we're gonna take a look at the crankshaft and see just how bad it is. I'm willing to bet that crank is junk right there because that is a lot of movement on a connecting rod. But that's definitely why it was pulled out. I mean, that's pretty definitive, if I may say so myself. So we're gonna keep digging into it, get a little further, pull the whole bottom end apart, and then we'll know what we're dealing with. So we were doing so good until we got to cylinder number eight. And it's safe to say that is junk. It wiped the crank out pretty good. Here you can see the bearings were still in there, but we're not in the best shape. They were looking pretty sad. All the other ones on all the other journals look pretty solid, but 
It only takes one bearing to kill an engine. So the crank is junk. I'm sure the number eight piston is junk, but the block may in fact be usable. So I'm gonna pull the mains off, pull the crank out, and maybe we'll get this block cleaned up and put some new pistons and rods in it, bore it out just a little bit. Who knows? Or I'll just build one of the five threes that's over there in the corner. We got options, but now we know why this thing was pulled originally. And uh, the moral of the story here is change your oil because I bet this spun bearing that killed the crank and therefore the entire motor is the cause of sludge building up in the pickup tube and down in the pan, which caused oil starvation, which therefore killed the number eight bearing on this engine. So change your oil, people. It's a lot cheaper than swapping motors and rebuilding motors and all that jazz. Don't ever let it get that bad. That is awful. Whoever owned this thing was really good at neglecting it. So while that is unfortunate, it's not entirely unexpected. There had to be a reason this thing was sitting on the side of the freeway. Having a blown out bearing on cylinder number eight is a very, very reasonable cause for somebody to abandon an engine. Although I don't know why they didn't just take it to the scrapyard and get money for it, but instead dropped it on the side of the freeway. I don't know. I'm torn between just building a different motor or building this one simply for the story. I think it's pretty funny that we found it on the side of the road, but I don't know. We have enough parts where we could throw everything in that block and it would work, but is it worth it? I'm not sure. What do you guys think we should do with the Interstate LS? Should we build it? Should we scrap it? Should we have left it where it was at? That's probably what most people are gonna say, but either way, we had to find out. We had to see for ourselves if it was gonna be a good motor or not. So now we know. Um, the real question is, where do we go from here? But anyway, if you wanna follow more of this saga and more cool stuff we're doing here at Sally Speed Shop, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us immensely. And I try to put out some good content for you guys. So stay tuned, lots more to come here. Thanks for watching.